Hi, I'm Chris, and thank you for choosing Lightspeed, more than just talk. Today we'll be going over the Prism fax service provided by Lightspeed. You'll need to go to fax.lightspeedvoice.com. You should have received an email from Lightspeed in order to set up your fax login. Once you click register, you'll be taken to a page to fill in your information. After clicking sign up, you'll then use the same information to log in. Once logged in, you'll be on the main dashboard page for the faxing portal. On the far left, you'll see four tabs, fax, drive, contacts, and for the admin's view only, users. We'll start with the fax tab, as it will be the most used day to day and cover the most important function, faxing. The first step will be adding a number you'd like to fax to. This can be done by either typing it in or selecting someone from your contact list. I don't want to fax any of the people in my contacts currently, so I'm just going to type a number in. We'll go over adding contacts just a little later. Type in the fax number, including the area code. If you'd like to fax more than one number, click plus on the right side to add another fax number field. You can click the red X if you change your mind. Now I want to include a cover page with my fax, so I'm clicking include cover page. Right now we're just going to use the default cover page but we will go over customizing them shortly. Here, I can enter who this fax is for, the subject, some notes, and any tags I'd like to use. Now, you can either drag a file from your computer to the drop your files here, or select and find the file you'd like to fax on your computer. Prism Fax accepts most picture and text file types. If the file type you'd like to send is incompatible, I'll be showing you how to use the file converter after sending this fax. After selecting our file, we can click send, which will send this fax immediately, or click the stopwatch icon to select the time and date we'd like it to be sent at. The eyeball icon will show you a preview of what your fax will look like before sending it out, in case you want to make any changes or just verify things. While previewing, you can also print or download, in case this fax arrangement is one you'd like to hang on to for later use. Click send to submit your outbound fax. A window will pop up showing the status. Sending a fax and getting a confirmation can take a few minutes, so if you want to move on to something else, feel free. You can always check back on your fax by going to the history tab on the left. While we're waiting, let's take a look at that fax that failed with the red X. I'll click the three dots on the right and then info. Under fax detail, there will be a lot of information like error codes that can be helpful to a Lightspeed technician in troubleshooting why a fax was not successful. That being said, when you send a fax, if it isn't able to make a connection, it will retry sending automatically multiple times over about 10 minutes. If after all those attempts it's still unsuccessful, it's more likely that the number may be incorrect or the recipient is having faxing issues of their own. If I'm able to confirm I have the right fax number and their fax is working properly and I want to retry, I can click the three dots again and click resend. The green check means that my fax sent earlier has been successfully sent. Now let's go back to the file converter. The file converter is not exclusively for converting files for fax. It simply is a tool to help you convert files if you need them to be PDF or TIFF. Here you can either drag a document into the drop files here, or click select and find the document on your computer. The file converter accepts most text and picture documents for converting. Once you've added your document and selected the output format, either PDF or TIFF, click convert. The file will then be sent to wherever your downloaded files normally go. Under the file converter is a list of numbers assigned to your login. As an admin, I have all the numbers on the account assigned to me, although they don't have to be. If I'm sending out a fax and want to change the default number in which I'm sending from, I can do that quickly here, simply by clicking the check mark next to one. You'll see the check mark indicating my new primary number stay permanently. Lastly, under fax numbers is tags management. Tagging is useful for organization as I may want to tag my faxes for making them easier to find or group later. If I delete a tag from here by clicking the X, it will delete the tag entirely and will remove it from any faxes where it was previously assigned. Clicking the plus, I can create new tags and choose whether I want them to be public or not, meaning other users on the account can see and use them. Now that we've covered sending a fax, we can go over what you'll see when receiving a fax. 
Receive faxes will be available in history, along with sent faxes, and will also be delivered to your email. I received a few faxes recently. I'll see that I can get a copy of that fax in the email as a PDF and some information about the fax itself. On the History tab, we'll be able to see all inbound or outbound faxes. If we're just looking for recently received faxes, we can narrow this down in the upper right by clicking Inbound. Any fax that's been received but not yet viewed will be highlighted like these above. Another way to view faxes is using the checkboxes. You'll see I can click multiple and then click View Print. If I know I've already received these faxes in my email and want to ignore them, I can just click Mark as Read. The History tab makes it easy to search for any previously received or sent faxes. If you know the number involved with the fax you're looking for, simply start typing it in the upper left. The faxes below will update automatically with the matching results. If you're unsure of the number involved with the fax you're looking for, but have other information to try and find it, click the three lines in the upper right to expand the advanced search. Here you can enter a date range, select a fax status like failed, success, choose a user who either sent or received the fax, or search by tag. Prism Fax comes with a few pre-built cover pages that may fulfill exactly what you're already looking for, but in any case, these can be edited to meet your needs, or you can create from scratch to build what you'd like. If we're creating our own cover page, we want to decide if it's one for everyone on the account to use, or just one for us to personally use. Only administrators can create cover pages for everyone to use. I'll make one for account so that everyone can use it. From here, I can decide if I'd like to build off of one of the already existing pages or from scratch. Let's use the default to see what a finished one looks like and make some changes. As you can see, this is pretty standard. Fax transmission on the top with some rows of information that would automatically be filled in using the tokens, or sometimes called shortcodes. The editor itself works like any standard Word document. You can adjust font, font size, alignment, and so on. The main thing I'll teach you here is how to insert the tokens. I want to add another row for sender company, as I want my recipients to know exactly who they're receiving the fax from. If I already have these codes memorized, I can just type them in now, but I don't, so I'm going to be using the insert option just to be sure. This button here is for insert template, which is for placing tokens. The drop down gives me a choice to select which token I want to insert. In this case, I'll choose sender company. I'll then click Save, and you'll see that it auto fills in and I'm good to go. The name of our company will automatically fill in here when using this cover page. But I've decided that I want our company logo to show up on the cover page. This can be done by clicking Upload from Drive, and then clicking Upload File. You can click Upload File and browse your computer to find the file you'd like to add. Since I want this cover page to be available to everyone on the account, I need this file to be public. As you can see, I can click on the image and drag it to where I'd like it to be. If I want to get a better view of how my document looks, I can click Preview along the bottom. If I like the way it looks, I'm going to give it a name and then click Save. If I want this to be the new default cover page, I can click the three dots and select Set as Cover Page. Otherwise, I can just set as user default for myself. If we go back to the facts page and turn on cover page, we'll see it's already ready to go. The numbers tab allows you to assign your users to specific numbers for them to be able to use. This tab is only viewable by admins. Also, if you don't have users on your account already, we'll go over setting them up shortly. When I click the numbers tab, the first thing I see is the numbers on the account and who is assigned to each. Here we see a number that is only used by me and another that has me and the rest of the staff assigned as well. On the right, click the gear icon. This is where you'll be able to make changes on who is assigned or removed. Since everyone in my office is already on this number, I'm going to go ahead and just remove myself. On second thought, I do want to be assigned to this number as well, so I can go back and click Add, click on myself, and I've been reassigned. Click Save when done. If you have a larger office and want to narrow down by specific numbers, you can use the search in the upper left. 
The Reports tab will give you a breakdown of all faxes sent or received within the time you choose to narrow down by. Reports are only viewable to admins. Fax usage shows the amount of faxes, in or out, on the date range specified. Week is chosen by default and shows that I had four faxes yesterday, but six faxes today. This can also be broken down by month, six month, and year. We also see some similar metrics on the right side for the current month, including usage, fax numbers, and total duration. Scrolling down a bit, you'll see reports you can generate, either detailed or just a summary. For detailed, we'll choose the account, which should likely stay as is. User, or if no specific user is selected, the report will be generated on everyone. Status, which is used to narrow down either all, failed, or successful faxes. And direction, which is for narrowing down by all, outbound, or inbound. Lastly, I can select the date range by clicking on the specific dates, then click Generate Report. Once the report is generated, you'll need to scroll down just a bit. We get a new box below for a detailed report, which shows all available fax information. This can be downloaded by clicking the download button toward the upper right. If we scroll back up and just run a summary report, we'll get all this information but condensed down. We'll now move on to the Contacts tab, where we'll see any contacts I have associated with my fax account. These would normally be people I expect to be faxing more than just once. Let's first add a new contact by clicking Create. There's an option to choose whether this is a person or organization. Then we'll enter name, email, fax number, and phone number. The email and phone number are both just to store this information and are not used relating to the faxing itself. The fax number will automatically be used when adding this contact to an outbound fax. At the bottom, you'll see visible to account users and editable by account users. This just means that other users on your account can send to these contacts as well. And if you'd like, they can edit them if needed. If you'd like to import a list that you already have into contacts, click import in the upper right. Instructions will be provided as to the layout of the CSV file. Click Next, and then either drag your files here or select from your computer. Then, if there's no errors, you can click Done. The last tab on the left side panel is Users. This, of course, is only viewable to admins. This is where you can create users for the account to add employees in your office with their own logins and numbers. As you can see, I have myself, which is labeled as an admin and the two other users along with me. If there are a lot of people on my account and I want to search for them, I can start typing their name or email address in the upper left. Also, there's an advanced search option where I can narrow it down by admin or user as well. If I want to create a new user, I'll click the New User button in the upper right. From here, I have the option to fill out all of their information, including creating their password myself, or I can select Invite User and allow them to complete this themselves. When using Create User and making the password myself, I can select Generate Password for a secure random password, and I can also require that they update it on their first login. PrismFax also has the ability to fax from email. This feature will only work from an email address associated with an active account in our system. To send a fax from email, compose a message from your email. In the To field, type the 11-digit fax number, followed by at send.lightspeedvoice.com. It is important to always use an 11-digit fax number when formatting the email. This means you need to include the one for faxing any number in the USA or Canada. If you have your cover page setting turned on, which we'll go over shortly, Prism Fax will automatically take details from your email and populate it directly onto the cover page. Anything that's typed into the subject line will show up on the RE portion of the cover page. Anything typed into the body of the email will populate in the comments field of the cover page. When sending a fax from email, you can attach a single document or multiple documents, and they will be converted to a faxable format and sent to your destination fax number. Once your documents are attached, simply hit send. As a quick tip, if you create a file using a scanner or a print to file, always choose the option of black and white for the best output. Settings can be accessed by both admins and users, but users will have limited options. The first section is your settings. 
Admins and users will both see this section, and it's important to know that changes made in your settings override those made in account settings. Account settings mainly act as a default. Here, you'll be able to add a profile picture, adjust your name, email address, phone number, and time zone. Also, you can enable or disable push notifications for your desktop. If this is your first time logging in, be sure to check your time zone and verify that it's accurate. Clicking on the drop-down and then starting to type your local time zone, either by America or, or the nearest largest city, will give you the option to select. A quick option is to click Guess on the right side, which should use account information to assign your time zone. If you make any changes, make sure to click Save. Under the Facts tab along the top, you'll see more adjustments such as Automatically Include Cover Page, Email to Fax, as we just went over before. This turns on the Cover Page option of Email to Fax. You can also adjust Outbound Fax Status Email Updates, Inbound Fax Status, and whether you'd like Email to Fax to immediately send a confirmation that it's on its way. On the Password tab, you can update your password. Type in your current password, and then what you'd like it to be, following the requirements. Looking at account settings, you can update the account name and time zone. Again, account settings is just default for any new users. If they make any changes under your settings, that will override the account settings. The next tab along the top will show notification settings. This is where you can set new users up with the default for their notification settings. The Fax tab will allow you to turn email to fax on or off. Also, if you want to allow fax attachment in email notifications. The last tab, Permissions, you can adjust if there's a password expiration or how long a user can stay logged in. This has been Prism Facts, and thank you for choosing Lightspeed. Lightspeed.